Hello and welcome to the interactive discussion of the Venice Declaration signatories in observance of the World Cities Day 2020. My name is Nora Yarea. I'm a healthcare executive here in Los Angeles, a mother of five adult children, and the vice president of IFFD. It is an honor and a privilege to moderate this event today. I want to extend my welcome to all of you and thank you very much for your interest in our project on inclusive cities for sustainable families. Together with the Veneto region and Univove University, the Venice Declaration strives to show that human settlements require intensive policy coordination and investment choices for families to reach their potential as productive, engaged, and capable agents of sustainable development, contributing fully to their members and communities. I also want to especially thank the United Nations Habitat New York Liaison Office for their ongoing support and the United Nations Division for Inclusive Social Development for their inspiration and assistance. To begin this event, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the new world president of IFFD, Mr. Olivier Yao from the Ivory Coast, who will give some welcoming remarks. Olivier, you have the floor. Thank you, Nora. I hope uh, everybody hears me. So dear excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you in this interactive discussion of Venice Declaration Signatories in observance of the World City Days 2020 that we held online this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I speak to you in my capacity as the new world president of the International Federation for Family Development. As you know, the Federation has promoted the Inclusive Cities for Sustainable Families project. IFFD is an umbrella organization for more than 250 family enrichment centers that operate in 70 countries, benefiting over 90,000 people annually and has been granted the general consultative status by the United Nations at its Economic and Social Council. Now we work with the United Nations entities, member states, and other civil societies organization, as well as in our regular courses that we give in the five continents. We are acutely aware that as stated by the Venice Environment Declaration, families are crucial, crucial to the development of uh, the people. They are development agents, provided they can find adequate environment needed to facilitate their role and make possible an accurate assessment of the needs for inclusive cities, especially in terms of investment in infrastructure. In the present health crisis, as in many others, the family unit has proven to be the main agent for recovery, governance, protection, and development within societies, and thus the cornerstone for the future. If families are these crucial development agents, an adequate environment is needed to facilitate their role. Local authorities should therefore consider the family unit as an important social agent to respond, recover, prevent, and prepare for the ongoing challenges. In a wonderful letter to all stakeholders of the project, President Chambeti explained as head of the regional council in one of the first and most affected region by the pandemic. Quote, our social infrastructure in Veneto is holding thanks to the family. The family has proven to be the reference point and the authentic pillar of society. Today, 
the family, the Venice Declaration is important. But tomorrow, it will be even more important to build a new world and start again together by treasuring what has happened." Unquote. Noting nothing is more timely, therefore, that one of the points of the conclusion for this year's Commission for Social Development in which the United Nations recognizes the important role of families that they can play in combating social exclusion, highlights the importance of investing in balance, health care, social services, families, in order to reduce inequality and promote the well-being of all the persons of all ages, as well as to contribute to better outcomes for children and other vulnerable families members in vulnerable situations and help to break the interdenominational transfer of poverty. Today, we are presenting the first annual report about what the signatories of the Venice Declaration have developed during the past months to make these goals a reality. In the middle of the unprecedented global crisis, with thousands of lives lost, millions of families affected, and with poor and densely populated areas paying the highest toll. I hope that this event can contribute to an interchange of good practices, not only in these territories, but also in many others that will come in the near future, allowing us to benefit from these collective experiences. Now, uh, I would like to speak to my uh, colleagues of Brazil, supporting the project, trying few words in uh, Portuguese. Quero agradecer também a Unenove por sua implicação no projeto Pelo Trabalho que realizaram para produzir este relatório. Nous remercions également le réseau européen d'inclusion locale et d'action sociale, Elissan, pour sa contribution. And let me conclude by expressing my hope and strong desire for more African cities to join this project. Coming from Ivory Coast, I know firsthand how much we need in our continent a renewed commitment of local and regional governments in favor of families. I hope IFFD can help us in this regard. Thank you for your attention.